joined now by Kristen Pagriba Brown. She's a, an assistant professor of epidemiology at the Zuckerman College of Public Health at the University of Arizona. Doctor, uh, good to have you on this morning. I mean, this, like testing, is one of those things that, that, that every health ep expert we've spoken to has said you, you need this on a, on a broad based scale to safely reopen. It looks like New York is really the only one who's doing it right now. Uh, how much of a difference does that make? Uh, it makes a lot of difference. And I don't know that New York is the only one doing it. I know we're, we're starting to ramp up to do this in Arizona as well. And mm -hmm. the reason it makes such a difference is because it can really cut off the transmission cycle. So for every person that you're able to get a hold of that might have had contact with somebody who was sick. And if you can get that person to start monitoring their symptoms and keep, um, keep themselves at home while there's a chance that they could um, be infectious, that's all the more people down the road that won't actually get infected as well. Understood. And credit where credit's due, Arizona is, you know, doing this as well. Uh, how much more challenging do, do, does it make it to do this as economies, states are opening up, because, because typically you, you look at a lot of the countries that had success stemming the spread of the virus, place like South Korea. I mean, they, they were doing contact tracing Singapore from the very beginning. Right. It, it is more challenging in some ways. You know, um, epidemiologists and public health departments have been doing case investigations this entire time where we call people who are sick and talk to them and learn about household contacts who might also be sick and get a sense of what their kind of movements are. But you're right, as the economy and other things start to open up, it does make it more challenging because you are going to have people who are starting to have more contacts. But uh, this is really kind of one of the basis of public health and epidemiology and what, what we're trained to do. And so we, we understand how to make those connections and then really work with people to get that information. You, you make the good point that contact tracing is just one piece of the public health response. So in effect, you, you need that along with broad testing, do you not? Absolutely, because um, the only way that contact tracing can be successful is first you need to be able to test cases rapidly to determine if somebody is sick. And once they are sick, once you determine who their contacts are, um, if their contacts start to actually become infectious, and even ideally, even if they aren't, because we know asymptomatic transmission is such an issue, we really would like to have all of their contacts tested as soon as possible as well. And so robust testing, both the PCR testing and then eventually the antibody testing is, is just one other piece of this public health puzzle. So, so New York City's doing this. You mentioned Arizona. Who else in the country is doing this? And, and, and is it anywhere near the scale that the country needs to, to, to reopen safely? I, mean, I, don't, I don't know off the top of my head every single jurisdiction that's doing this, mm -hmm. but I, I know that um, most health departments are at least trying to ramp up to be able to do this on a much broader scale than they have been doing. And it is, um, it is an important piece, but I think that it's, we are not there yet but we're, we're working towards getting there. And you mentioned just before we go, uh, you and your students, you're, you're assisting uh, the county health department there to handle uh, reported positive cases. So, so, so what do you do when, when, you, when you find someone who's, who's been infected? So I work um, with a student team. I've been leading this team for about 15 years called SAFER. And we already had students trained and in place to be able to respond to outbreaks and work with health departments to do routine surveillance. And so we really work as surge capacity underneath the health department. And when they have a case reported, my students are able to go and work with them to uh, determine who the person is who's sick, make contact, do an interview to determine what kind of risk factors they might have, what kind of symptoms they have. I mean, you're starting to see uh, new reports about symptoms that are more common that we didn't know about before and all of that comes from those case investigations and so students then make that um, make those connections and then enter that data back into the health department mm -hmm. system which is how we're making these decisions well appreciate the work you're doing we wish you the best of luck and we hope that other communities around the country follow that example christine pogriba brown thanks very much thank you have a nice day